Oh, man, and what, uh, what determined your choice of that location? Yeah, I'm from uh, the East Newcastle Fife originally, so the script was written with kind of my home village in mind. Uh, but as it turned out, we done uh, location records. We ended up filming in Garden in Aberdeenshire, which there's a few people in tonight. <laughs> 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 They looked after us at our time there, but uh, no, it was great. It was just, uh, you know, the, the whole village just got right behind the project. And I think what worked was because the fragmented nature of the film, there was a lot we had to film. And uh, so what was perfect with that was like everything we needed was really close together, if that made sense. So it meant we could do it all in the one location. Perfect. Um, the, um, the, the legend of the, of the sea monster, this, this story, uh, is that is that an actual legend that you that you heard, or where, where does that come from? It's, it's based on similar, like uh, I think I grew up, like I say, right by the ocean, so it was always, uh, you know, there was, um, yeah, stories. I guess the mythology of the the mysterious ocean, and uh, my mum's also here tonight, so she's probably to blame for uh, instilling that into me, you know, as a young child, like kind of yeah, tell me certain stories about, uh, yeah. So that was. Uh, I think it's, it's similar in a lot of, uh, you know, uh, coastal villages that these kind of myths and, uh, you know, obviously now a lot of them have died out and stuff, but, uh, yeah. But, but it stuck with you, these, these stories, and clearly, yeah, obviously, yeah. clearly. Um, t tell us about the, uh, the, the choice of um, such an interesting way of filming the, the, the flashbacks. I mean, it's, sometimes it's hard to tell what's a flashback and what's not within the, this, this very fractured narrative. But you use, uh, you've got black and white, you've got a low resolution video, you've got stuff that looks like, you know, a home uh, movie kind of video. Why did you choose to use uh, so many different uh, visual treatments of, of, the, of the story? I think it was about uh, getting, you know, it was like a, a character study of Aaron and to get, uh, hopefully for the audience, the idea was to get right into his bloodstream, you know, so it was... Uh, so these different formats allowed us to do it. So whether it was his memories or you know his greatest fears or these kind of things, and just uh, having that kind of palette uh, to work with. And I think something else that gives us is you know contrast throughout the film. So we have uh, you know Benjamin, the cinematographer, at the end there. Uh, you know we would have stuff that uh, looked you know uh, very clean and very uh, beautiful, if you will, and then kind of mixing that with really ugly. Uh, camera phone images and you know that kind of stuff to give contrast. Since we have so so many people on stage, maybe maybe um, uh, we could pass the mic down and, 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 and have you introduce yourselves and, and, and talk talk about your experience oh, on the film. Talk about share something about working on the film. <laughs> um, I'm George and I play Aaron. Um, I, my, it was a wonderful experience making it. Um, I mean, the, sort of, I guess something I could talk about. With, you know, for me, uh, it was the most that I've ever sort of like the closest relationship I've had with a director, um, and I felt really involved, which kind of gives you a, a confidence um, when you're doing, you know, lots of lots of different stuff that you kind of he's got your back, you know, and um, and it kind of really makes you feel a part of something. And you can invest in it further that way because you kind of got someone's trust, and it kind of makes you realise that you know it's a good thing, and therefore you make an effort to you know, trust everyone with you. Um, and it, you know, so that, that's that's me. <laughs> have, have you two? Cheers. Thanks very much. I was just going to ask if, if, if you had uh, known each other before uh, making this film. Too far back and developed a great rapport, obviously. Uh, I'm Jordan, I played Michael. Yeah. Hi, I'm Colin McCallan, I play the Billy the Bully. Uh, we weren't great with names. Uh, today was my first time I could get to see the
me to the script originally was Paul's beautiful script. I think he's a wonderful, wonderful writer to begin with and then I need to direct it as well and I had such a great experience working with George who made me cry all the time <laughs> and I had to keep doing <laughs> retakes where I got my tears out and then we managed to kind of uh, move on with the filming but it was just a beautiful experience with an amazing writer-director, amazing actors, fantastic cast and we were spoiled rotten in this film. It's an honour and a privilege to be part of it, so thank you. My name is Michael Smiley, I played Frank, and I'm well pissed off, <laughs> because I was promised it was a musical. <laughs> <laughs> One wee bit of a fucking Kaylee, and I saw it. I'm oh, sorry, that was the first time I saw your face, which is fantastic. Kate's going to be releasing that as a single. <laughs> and, uh, all, uh, all the proceeds are going to the Humpback Society of, uh, of uh, the Western Hebrides. So, please go check this out. I really, I loved it. I'd worked with Paul before on a short called Believe. Oh, Kate, okay. no, I'm both I'm worked. Dead she was my dead wife. I was in a coffin. Yeah, Kate Dickey and I shared a coffin. Not many people could say that, you know what I mean? Probably not even her husband. Yeah, I'm sure. There you go, Kenny. <laughs> One up with your old man there, haven't I? Shared a coffin with your wife, Kenny. Anyway, sorry. No offense. Um, no, so I worked with Paul in, um, on The Leave, and um, that was an, an amazing experience as well. And it's always. When I got asked if I could do this, it was I loved it. I loved the idea of working on it because it's always really ethereal and it's always really um, an emotional uh, journey that you go on, and it just leaves you spinning, which I'm sure a lot of you are um, still trying to go like that with it. But, and that's what I love about um, a good film. You know, it gives you something to talk about afterwards and really think, and you, it'll stay with you for days. And that's what a good film is. I'm sick of death going to see fucking films and knowing exactly how it's coming in. Um, I love this. Uh, I was going to for the first time seeing it as well. And uh, you're just amazing, big lad. Maybe we'll go up Hold him dear to your chest. He's a fucking, he's a national treasure. <laughs> <laughs> he's a national treasure. I've got half of the people in Northern Ireland. He's a national treasure. I might take him. I might take him back with <laughs> <laughs>
to work with such visual material from the yeah. Uh, me and Paul met a while back, also on the shore with Michael and Kate. Uh, yeah. What can I say? It's just yeah, it's always good to work with Paul and because he writes so visually, so it's very exciting. <laughs> All the time. Yeah. Intense stuff. <laughs> Uh, let's uh, take some questions or, or comments from the audience. If you if you want to uh, ask or say something, please uh, raise your hand. Go ahead. And it's hard to see, so it may take a a minute. I guess it's a bit uh, people are stunned, <laughs> stunned, so indifferent. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be indifferent. Uh, there's a hand. Go ahead. Paul, it's the uh, first time I've seen your work, and uh, we have mentioned uh, one of your shorts where you had uh, two people sharing a coffin. There's a, a certain darkness, perhaps, comes through in your work, and I just wonder uh, what the influence or the inspiration for that is. Uh, yeah, so that's a uh, <laughs> slightly tough one. Uh, I don't know, like, I think with the, one of the themes in the film is, uh, you know, obviously uh, the death uh, and the, the grief part of it. And I don't know, it wasn't a, really a conscious thing, but I lost my father when I was like 15, and I think I was at that age where, uh, although I knew what was happening, I didn't really accept the finality of death, if you will. So I think, yeah, <laughs> like I say, it wasn't necessarily conscious, but looking at it now, you can see that some of it's. Uh, yeah, issues. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's all it is. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes? Hi, Paul. Um, can I ask you a question? Because even though you've become that quite dark, there's a real sense of belief, of faith, that goes through the mean, even shorts. I mean, is that something? Are you a man of, of, of belief? Do you believe in extraordinary? I think I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm very interested in that, just uh, something out with the, yeah, the ordinary, you know, that, the, I think that's why the ocean was quite a good metaphor for that, because it's the mystery of that, so it's the idea that, you know, may, maybe we don't know everything, and there's one, there's maybe something that can, you know, can a miracle happen, or these, these questions certainly are things I'm interested in exploring in the work, you know, yeah. Uh, yes, sir. I think uh, I think it was what, probably about ninety percent what was in the script. Yeah, and it was it was if anything it was just about uh, taking some stuff out. Yeah, so it was kind of tightening it in the edit. Uh, but it was always yeah, like a lot of these a lot of that was scripted, or it was at least the idea of it was scripted that we would go to uh, these different formats and. You know, the mood was definitely in the script and stuff, so, uh, yeah, I think that, uh, that was, and the ending was like that in the script as well, it was always uh, to, to kind of let the audience, um, and I think hopefully that's the part of that throughout the film, to let the audience put a bit of themselves into it or engage and, you know, that they can read it, uh, how they choose almost certain parts. <laughs> Yeah, okay, waiting. Go ahead. Yes, um, Paul, I saw your work, Believe, in the yeah, film festival here three years ago, and I really liked it. Can you tell us about how you developed the story of this? Is it character or the, or the, or the legend or the location? What inspired you to make the story? It's, for this, yeah, like, like I say, it was uh, growing up in a similar village, I think, and, uh, you know, uh, having, yeah, whether that, like I'm saying, that my own experience of grief, but I think a big starting place for it was actually like I work a lot uh, with images and stuff and I think it was just having that image of uh, I didn't know it was George at that time but somebody like uh, with the gills cut you know as if it was like half fish half human so it was just that one image and then it was almost you know uh, working my way but it's like alright how would that come in that you know how could that happen something like that where it was uh, yeah someone that had given themselves gills 
I don't know if that's, but that's, yeah, that's, that was part of it, you know, just uh, these images that I kind of think of and then, yeah, a few of them pop up in the, the film. Uh, yes, go ahead. Hi there. Um, Joe Cameron Brown, I don't know if you remember, but I did some work earlier before you started filming. And I just have to say, obviously I saw the script and I thought, I can't see how this can happen on screen. And that was just you were right. entirely <laughs> filled by the, the extraordinary combination of utterly fantastic but absolutely palpable. So it wasn't kind of like, you know, some uh, unbelievable thing. It was something completely that you could grasp. But I also have to, George, just commend you because a number of factors meant that I couldn't uh, be there at, at the filming, and we all know what, what these were. But we did a lot of work beforehand, didn't we, George? And I have to completely congratulate you. It was, um, the the characterisation was so powerful. And from my point of view, because it always comes from the voice, because I was the dialect coach on the And here, um, your characterization and the vocalization of that character was just extraordinarily powerful. And I really congratulate you. Uh, we have press time for two, two more. If you're willing to stand that long? Wave, wave, wave. Uh, yes, waving. Okay, uh, well, I thought it was kind of interesting that it wasn't just a study of Aaron, but of this kind of closed Scottish community. And I felt that their actions were just as questionable. They, they had good and bad uh, kind of points about them. But So I was wondering, are there any other kind of Scottish communities or Scottish relationships that you're keen to explore in the future, or other stories? I, th I think so, yeah, as a Scottish filmmaker, I'm, I'm interested in keep making films in Scotland, you know, and then, uh, yeah, so, for that, yeah, and I think, uh, yeah, with the community, there's always uh, this idea that, um, you know, to, to, to after a tragedy's happened and, and the community's dealing with it one way, and Aaron's character's part of that towards the start, but then, as he starts going, you know, the extreme opposite direction, it's this idea that, you know, that uh, creates friction within the community as well. So that was, uh, I don't know if that totally answered you. What, what other stories have you, uh, are interest, uh, that are you interested in about Scotland in particular? Being Scottish, like what, what sort of, because it, it's nice, I mean, you know, it's kind of nice to see a film that's not set on a Scottish scheme you know, we've had a yeah, lot well, of Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's, like, it's, a, it's a similar village to where I grew up and stuff, so that was uh, part of what I know, but I don't know if every, you know, I'd be surprised if every film I made was uh, set in the same village. <laughs> Would you guys have us back? <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, uh, no, for sure, I'm, I'm interested in telling uh, different stories in Scotland, for sure, yeah. And uh, a final question. Uh, yes, in the red. I want to ask a question. Just want to say thanks very much for treating my grandson. He was also a good drug addict. Is he still there? Is he? Oh, yeah. He's still there. 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 Well, uh, I want to thank, on behalf of the festival, thank all of you so much for bringing this film here to us and, and presenting, allowing us to present it to the audience tonight. Um, obviously, it's a film that's going to go far and be remembered, and uh, I, I congratulate you. And uh, thank you very much, Paul, and the cast and crew.